Hello, friends. Yes, I'm back. It's after August. God was good to me during August. Thank you for your prayers. Yes, very special time with God during August this year. I did get my book sent off. The, the publisher accepted it for publication. And now it's waiting for proofs to get done so that I can proofread it. So I'm grateful for that. <clears throat> there are many other things that I didn't quite get done, but um, we got the schedule all worked out for the piano lessons for uh, Gianna. I'm associating a, a new teacher with me this year, and um, we are <laughs> way full. I'm full. I have 30 students this year. That's plenty. And uh, Gianna has a couple openings left. But we got that that schedule worked out. It was not easy. It took my last couple weeks. And also, I've been working on uh, preparations for our Christmas event because we need to start getting the word out to how it's going to be. And I just yesterday got our date. I haven't told anyone, but a couple of us so far. So you're first learning it. Um, the date for our Christmas event, December 14. So mark it on your calendar. I don't have yet where you register, but um, we're, we're working on it. So um, let's see, what else did I do? Oh, I just came in from the street. We had a good time in Isaiah 1 today. We're going to be in Isaiah for a few weeks here. And, um, you know, the Lord wants to hear your voice, he wants to hear my voice. He says, come now, let's talk together. Let's reason together. He wants your logic. He wants to see how your mind works. So come talk to him. We're looking at Romans today. <clears throat> and I failed to tell you when we were in Luke that here's my book, which has... Can you read that right side? Saved without swords. It's three sections. One is Old Testament stories. The middle section is Luke. And I failed to tell you while we were doing Luke. The last section is Romans. We go right through the book of Romans. Much more detail than we can today in one session. So I just encourage you, get the book, Saved Without Swords. It's by me. And it's on uh, Amazon.com. And you'll get the whole thing about Romans at the last end of that book. Well, there are several other books there by me, too. I love to feel connected with you by that means. So let me know how it went. Today, we are actually reading a smattering of verses from Romans. Romans is, is where you've heard all the verses about salvation. And yes, I chose <laughs> the popular verses for us to read today. So we're kind of skipping one chapter to another, a few verses from each. I think that's all the announcements I had. So let's pray. God in heaven, we thank you for the Bible. We thank you for sending Jesus. We thank you for Paul's writings, for the ways he put things together. Now, please bless us as we read and as we understand. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're in Romans 1. Romans 1, 16 and 17. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Romans 2, Romans 2, verses 28 and 29. For the person is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, nor 
the person circumcised, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Romans 3, Romans 3, 21 to 23. Now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all those who believe. For there is no difference. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 4, Romans 4, 2 through 4. For if Abraham were justified by works, oh, then he would have something to be proud about, to glory about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now, to the one who works, is not the record the reward reckoned by grace but of debt Romans 5 Romans 5 1 and 2 then 6 to 8 and then 19 to 21 Romans 5 1 therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 6, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous person will person die yet peradventure for a good person some would even dare to die but god commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us verse 19 for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6. Romans 6, 4 through 8, 11 and 23. Romans 6, 4. Therefore we are buried with him in baptism into death, that, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For the one who is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we're dead with Jesus, with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. Verse 11, likewise, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Romans 7, verses 18 and 19. Romans 7, 18. For I know that, it, that in me, that is in my flesh, wills no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Romans 8, verses 1 through 4, 26, 28, and 38 to 39. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Verse 26, likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought to. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. Verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 9, Romans 9, 6 through 8. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect. For they are not all Israel who are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall all your seed be called. That is, they which are the children of flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Romans 10, 3 through 4 and 11 to 12. Romans 10, 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Romans 10, 11. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord is over, is the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call on him. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And here's Romans eleven twenty six, And so all Israel will be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And here's Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And the last 
reading Romans 13, 8 through 10. Owe no one anything but to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that's several readings from Romans. We are preaching through the Bible in a year. We finished a survey of the Old Testament where the origins of everything are explained, the good world and the cosmic threat to it, the Sabbath, marriage, and the pervasive hope of a coming deliverer. Israel and the sounding surrounding nations, the Bible and God's efforts to be known by his humans. Then we came into the New Testament with the stories of Jesus and his followers. Paul was one of Jesus' followers who wrote much of the New Testament in the form of letters to the believers in the various places where he had started churches. Today, we will spend some time with Paul's letter to the Romans. Paul wanted to go to Rome. He even wanted to go to Spain beyond Rome. This letter is somewhat of an introduction of Paul to the believers already in Rome. Paul's earlier letters were letters of crisis management to the Thessalonians regarding their worries about the delay in Jesus' return, to the Corinthians regarding various disruptions in their church life and love, and to the Galatians regarding the gospel, its origin in God, not humans, its means by faith in Jesus, and its results in freedom, not slavery. Now, Paul organized all his thoughts and wrote a thoughtful thesis of salvation. The letter to the Romans is one of the more complicated pieces of writing in the Bible. Paul wrote in long sentences and enjoyed wordplay, allegory, and words encompassing very large ideas. This is no campfire talk, but instead it is courtroom logic to answer the questions, can non-Jews be saved and how? does salvation work? Romans can be outlined according to the logic and the evidence. Primary, Romans 1 to 4. Progressing, Romans 5 to 8. Puzzle, Romans 9 to 12. And finally, power for living, Romans 13 to 16. Paul's primary logic is that all have sinned and need salvation. Non-Jews, Jews, and everyone, we are all in the same predicament, estranged from God and doing evil and all sorts of hurtful things. Paul adds to that bad news, the good news that God made a way for Abraham to be saved by faith and neither by trying to keep the law or by cutting off his flesh, as in circumcision. He simply believed, fully persuaded, that God could do what God had promised. And this was counted to Abraham for right doing. Paul's progressing logic affirms that Jesus, by his grace and favor toward us, can fully turn around whatever Adam did to unleash sin in the world. What humans must do is die. Die with Jesus. Die in baptism. Count themselves dead to the pull away from God and alive. Count themselves alive to God. This will not be easy and must be pursued all the time. 
But Jesus, through his own death, has made it possible and will thrill you with new life in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> There's a lot of counting going on in Romans. God counted Abraham's living or faith for right living. I am to count myself dead to sin and alive to God. Paul's puzzle that both began and troubled his logic had to do with his own people Israel. His affections were bound up with his people Israel, yet they did not believe in Jesus and therefore did not have the key to right living or to salvation. They pursued and proffered circumcision and many other laws to make themselves right, but they missed the righteousness that comes by faith. Paul said Christ is the end of using the law as a means of righteousness. Paul said those who believe in Jesus are the real Israel. And all Israel will be saved. Paul's logic for powerful living finishes out his letter to the Romans. We are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. This seems to be me to be another instance of counting. A deliberate choice in our thinking which will let us count ourselves dead to sin, alive to God, and transformed by his grace, while God counts us as righteous. This is followed by the gifts of the Spirit in the church and amazing empowerment to love in our personal lives. Paul makes it clear that he expects the Ten Commandments, with no exception for the Sabbath commandment, to find their fruit in the lives of believers because of love. The love of God, which counts us righteous, is the power for living in Paul's letter to the Romans. <clears throat> so to summarize, Paul's primary logic in Romans is that all have sinned and need salvation. Paul's progressing logic affirms that Jesus, by his grace and favor toward us, can fully turn around whatever Adam did to unleash sin in the world. Paul's puzzle that both began and troubled his logic had to do with his own people, Israel. He resolved that puzzle by concluding that all Israel in Christ will be saved. Paul's logic for powerful living finishes out his letter to the Romans. In this way, Paul completed his original thesis. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek or the non-Jew. The non-Jew is me. Paul clearly taught that I can be saved. You can be saved. Believe it today. Choose to open your mind to that belief. Well, I have a couple questions for you. Just to think about. Talk about among yourselves if you want to. So compare and contrast the courtroom with the campfire. I want you to think about the language that's used, the forms and structure of the discourse. What is different between a courtroom and a campfire? The difference between receiving information and on the other hand, receiving experience is the difference between reading Romans and Luke. Romans is your courtroom. Luke is your campfire. <clears throat> Number two. After reading Romans many times, yes, more than once, describe what you think Paul was like. Yes, I want you to read Paul before you answer this question. Don't just go by what someone else said. 
Would you try to get a chance to talk to Paul back then from reading him? How do you feel about him? Would you try to have an appointment with him? Or would you hang back? Wait for the other people to go first. Or would you actually try to avoid him? Not go to the place where he's preaching. So I want to pray for us. A lot of trouble has gone on in the world since the last of July during August when I was talking with the Lord in silence and solitude. So I want to pray for that and also for you. Let's pray. Lord God in heaven, we honor and glorify and praise your name because you sent Jesus to die for us. You made it possible for everyone, not just Jews, to be saved. And, and you sent us the book of Romans to show us how to believe in you. And, and what a difference that will make in our lives. So we, we, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify you as king of the universe. And yet we come in repentance because we have so, so often failed to honor you. We have, we have gone about boasting or, or, trying to bear up under something for on our own we have turned to be breaking your commandments um, by violence to one another by failing to show love and so we ask your forgiveness we recognize that our forgiveness cost the life of our savior we thank you for sending jesus and we thank you for your forgiveness now. And in the joy of that forgiveness, we come to you with big requests. There are so many hurting in Hawaii from the fire. I can't imagine the images that the children will carry all their lives of that event. I ask that you walk with them. And then... There are those who've lost everything again in a hurricane in Florida. I know you can connect them with resources. You can heal their hearts from the losses. You can redirect their lives. And that's what we ask for. And I always think of those who are experiencing the, the fears and the dangers of war. I ask for your blessing for those who have experienced cancellation here in America, um, where people's livelihoods are cut out from under them. And those in other nations where their lives are just plain taken. Or they're put in prison forever as political agents. Or their lives, are, their homes are bombed. Their supplies are short because of bombing of supply chains. Lord, there's so much trouble in our world. There are many who are in jail or prison for telling your word, for sharing who you are. And I so ask that you will walk with them, be their presence be their joy wherever they are. Please protect them. Protect them from such torture as is possible. Lord, we honor you and praise you. We know that 
you can and that you do stand by each of us who calls on your name, everyone who calls on your name. And so we ask that, I ask especially that you will uh, energize me to, to explain to people all they need to call do is call on your name. Please, Lord, give me the, the words and the energy to put out that invitation far and wide. Um, I ask that you'll please bless every one of my friends here, whether there's uh, requests for a family member or a friend or or even their school or their city. Lord, you know the requests that are on our mind. You know where, where money is short. You know where... Um, Families have been estranged. You know where uh, the families are separated. You know, you know the issues everyone faces. And so we, I, I lift them up before you. And I ask that today you will give each one of us something special in our walk with you. I ask that because today is Sabbath and I believe that you're, in the business of giving out special things on Sabbath. So we thank you, we honor and glorify you, and we will be praising you for all eternity. And we've asked it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I'm Wilma Zalabach with Grace Chapel Fellowship, a church to bless other churches where listening is our unity. And of course, I have those six priorities in preaching. Um, God is good. Humans have been taken away from good. And Jesus came to bring us back. And in light of that, I can't do it. God can. And I decide to let him. Two more. The Bible is worth reading. And the Sabbath is a gift worth remembering. So I just want to put in another plug. This is the book that you can get on amazon.com that tells, that has a whole third section, the last third of the book, almost half, on Romans. You might enjoy going through that. Next week, I have a planning meeting at three for our big Christmas event. So I'm not sure I'm going to get back uh, for this, but we'll do this video if we at all can, even if it's a little later next week. So until then, may God bless you and keep you. <laughs>